It was in the late 19th century that an orthopedic surgeon, Thomas Morton, described a painful affliction in the forefoot that later became termed Morton's neuroma or Morton's metatarsalgia. He and other investigators determined that inflammation of a nerve in the bottom of the foot was the cause of this pain. It's interesting, many studies have determined that probably the incidence in women is four times greater than in men and this deformity of a nerve or the inflammation of a nerve usually occurs in the fourth through sixth decades. When we look at a model of the foot, the most common location is between the third and fourth toes, but the second most common location is a neuroma between the second and third toes. The cause of formation of a neuroma is not entirely clear, but certainly it's been suggested that poor footwear may be the most common cause Constricting footwear, tightening over the forefoot has been certainly suggested as the reason why so many more women have this problem than men. But other causes of trauma include fractures of the metatarsal bones or even the repeated trauma of walking along on a hard surface impacting on the ground may cause thickening of the nerve. And as that thickening incre increases in size, it, the nerve is more commonly traumatized again. And this indeed, over a period of time, leads to a painful neuroma. The history that a patient gives when they have a neuroma is pain in the forefoot, and often it's a fairly vague, large area on the top of the foot. When we look closely, sometimes the pain or numbness will radiate to the third and fourth toes or to the second and third toes. Often removing a shoe will relieve pain, whereas wearing a shoe and walking for a period of time may cause the onset of pain. Often taking the shoe off and rubbing the foot on the top and on the bottom will relieve the discomfort. Let's actually look at a patient and see where neuroma pain may occur. One of the most difficult things for a patient to do is to, to isolate the area of pain in the forefoot. That's because the foot is a long ways away from the hands and it's inside a shoe and a sock. When a person first comes in and is seen for a neuroma, often they have a large area of pain that they sense their discomfort in. The challenge for us is to try to isolate that to a very small area. When we examine a foot, we will often press the foot from side to side to see if we can cause pain. Sometimes we will push from top to bottom, and if we get a certain click feeling or a snapping feeling, we feel the neuroma actually pop above the ligament in the foot, and that may cause pain or radiation of numbness into the toes. What we try to do is instead of isolating the pain to a broad area, is to think even like an ice pick where it would be going from the top to the bottom. And what we want to do is have the patient isolate a small area of pain and they'll often mark it on the top and on the bottom of the foot so that when they come in the office, they've really honed it down to a specific area of pain. When we try to get a patient to isolate the area of their pain, I liken it to the analogy of a doorbell. When you push on a doorbell, it'll ring if you are right on the button, but anywhere else, you won't get the doorbell to ring. Likewise, when we examine the foot, we're going to push in certain areas around the foot, trying to find that exact location of pain. One of the symptoms that people have is the radiation of pain and or numbness to the digits or the toes. The other location where a neuroma occurs is in the second inner space. And if a neuroma occurs here, then a patient will likewise have numbness or pain only on the inner aspect of the second toe and the third toe. Let's look at the anatomy of the forefoot. In this plastic model, we've used electrical wire to simulate the nerves in the foot. The black portions are the large nerves and the copper portions are the ends of the nerves as they come out into the toes. Each of the metatarsals are connected to each other by ligaments that are shown in green. And actually in between the third and the fourth metatarsals, we see a large 
enlarged nerve, which is actually a neuroma that is caused by friction or injury from the ligament rubbing against the nerve. So let's, let's turn this over and look at the nerves from the bottom of the foot. At the level of the heel bone, we see the enlarged nerves, and then you'll see them branching into all the toes on the bottom of the foot. Some feel that the reason for the neuroma occurring in this region is because of a small crossover branch between the third and fourth toe nerves. We can see the enlarged nerve in between the third and the fourth toes in comparison to a normal sized nerve between the second and third toes. This is the area that the pain emanates from and the area often that has to be excised when surgery is performed. The non-surgical treatment of a neuroma includes obtaining wide roomy shoes in the forefoot region, even placing a metatarsal pad in the shoe to decrease weight bearing in the region of the neuroma, or even a cortisone injection on occasion. Let's look at the placement of a metatarsal pad and see how that might be done in order to alleviate pain. One of the treatments that we can use early on when a neuroma occurs is to take a small pad and place it in the shoe to transfer the weight from the area of the neuroma to the area of the metatarsals. Besides using clinical examination, besides feeling the foot, palpating or pressing on pressure points, we will sometimes use xylocaine injections to actually anesthetize an area of pain. And if we can get a patient to actually have an absence of pain for a couple of hours after the injection is done, we may be able to prove that that's the neuroma or that's the area of pain. We may see a patient, for example, every week for three weeks and inject several different locations, one each week, to try to temporarily anesthetize the area. Because if we can make the pain go away for a short period of time, then we can locate exactly where the pain is. We'll inject an area with xylocaine, and if we can eliminate that pain for a couple of hours while they walk around and maybe some of their more painful shoes that they wear, we can isolate the location of the neuroma. But in time, surgery may be necessary if conservative measures are unsuccessful. Surgery is performed on an outpatient basis with the foot anesthetized so that there really is no pain. A patient has the option of further sedation if they'd like. Once the outpatient surgery is performed, a patient is able to leave, usually walking with crutches for a day or so, and using a bunion shoe on their foot with a dressing in place that's changed every seven to 10 days. The surgery itself is done through a small incision on the top of the foot. We usually make an incision from the top so that the person is able to walk with no incision on the bottom. We actually divide the ligament that's shown in green and observe the neuroma, which is an enlarged nerve, and we remove that and then close the wound. Surgery usually takes less than a half an hour, and often a patient is home within about two hours following surgery. Pain medicine is used, and the patient is able to walk with crutches and a bunion shoe with weight borne on the heel and on the side of the foot. Office visits are every seven to 10 days with sutures being removed at approximately three weeks following surgery. We usually wrap the foot with a gauze and tape dressing for six weeks following surgery in order for the ligament that we've cut to heal correctly. After six weeks, usually a shoe such as a sneaker, tennis shoe, or wide-soled shoe can be used for walking and sports activities often are implemented about 12 weeks after surgery. The general results of surgery are usually about 80 to 90 percent satisfaction. What I think is really important is for us to spend the time to make the correct diagnosis. Although pain is in a wide area in the foot initially, if we can pinpoint it to a very small area on the top and on the bottom, again sort of like that ice pick going through the foot, if we can find a very isolated area of pain, our chance of success is much higher. Now certainly there are risks involved of any surgery. There's a small risk of infection, 
And there certainly is a small risk that an aroma can come back or that there may be an aroma in another location. But again, if we're careful in the diagnosis and we spend the time together, you watching your foot and me helping you to pinpoint the level and the location of your pain, the level of success is usually much higher. While conservative treatment often is helpful in treating the early neuroma that is not overly painful, as time passes and as pain becomes quite constant, surgery often is necessary. I believe that it's the cooperation of both the patient and the physician in making that correct diagnosis that is really the key to our success. And if we can spend the time learning about what causes neuroma pain and the effective treatment of it, I think that we can have success in restoring your foot to painless function. Thank you.